What's happening everyone now before we get into this video and I am really looking forward to it I need to let you know that this video has a sponsor Get in! Thank you so much to Readly for partnering with me on this video. Now, I cannot tell you how useful and clever this platform is. It allows you to have access to over 5,000 newspapers, magazines, publications, all in one convenient place. It is such good value. One account gives you five profiles. So, per household, pretty much, you get one account and everybody will have access to educate themselves and entertain themselves all via one account. So for someone like me who always wants to read about football, I have a plethora of footballing publications to choose from. But the brilliance of Readly is that when there is something going on that I don't know as much as I would like to, for example, the Super Bowl is encroaching. I don't know the NFL as well as I would like to. I don't have to do anything in particular. I simply go on to Readly and I can then access all of the NFL action that I need to. Listen to this. If you click the link in the description below, you will have two months completely free via that link. Thank you so much to Readly. And the best bit of it is you can cancel at any time. So there really is no reason to not give it a go. I guarantee you that if you give it a go, you will never look back. Revolutionary stuff. Right, there we have it. Thank you so much to Readly. I am honoured that you have chosen to partner with me on this video. It's been a joy to work with you. Now let's get stuck into the video. Marcus Rashford is the best player in European football at the moment. Marcus Rashford is simply sensational, unplayable, and he is carrying a club with the might of Manchester United upon his rather boulder-like shoulders. What's happening, everybody? I thought we could have a chat about the brilliance of Marcus Rashford, a player who has found form that I did not think he were capable of. He has taken his unquestionable talent to a new level, and... I think we need to explore why and how. I think that he is truly sensational. That's right, Marcus Rashford has scored 10 goals in as many games since returning from the World Cup. That is already twice as many as he managed to score last season. When he is in this sort of dazzling form, he is the rarest of creatures. He is a player capable of scoring from anywhere on the pitch, at any time of the game, in any manner. He is a threat from anywhere, a threat in any circumstance, and a player capable of almost anything. There is no doubt that where I am concerned with regard to Marcus Rashford, a little bit of contrition is in order. I always rated Marcus Rashford. I always thought that he was capable of a certain level of performance. I went to the 2016 European Championships in France, and Marcus Rashford was a player that I was pinning our hopes on. I know that he is a class player, but I didn't necessarily think he were capable of this form. I didn't think he would be able to reach these new heights off the back of what we saw last season. Last season, he was in disarray. He looked a shadow of his former self, and there were even times at Old Trafford where the Stretford end were getting frustrated with him. Now he's back with a vengeance. He looks truly remarkable. There's a newfound frame, Jamie. He's absolutely ripped. He's scoring goals for fun, all types of goals. It actually makes him one of the most diverse strikers in the league. He is capable of anything. He scores a toe poke from two yards or he picks it up outside the box, goes round Thomas Partey and pings it in. Not many players are capable of that. Eric Ten Hag, in my humble opinion, deserves an awful lot of credit here. More importantly, in Eric Ten Hag's opinion, he deserves no credit. Eric Ten Hag gives the full credit to Marcus Rashford. He says it's simply about confidence and says, I'm not Harry Potter. There's nothing I can do. It's about the confidence of the player. I'm going to to politely, whilst deferring to Eric Ten Hag, I'm going to politely disagree. I think Eric Ten Hag deserves so much credit here. I think he has got so much right. All of the big decisions since he has been at that club, he has got completely and utterly spot on. The small issues, he's got right. But the big issues, obviously the Cristiano Ronaldo saga, he got that spot on. But even smaller things, when Marcus Rashford overslept, that could have been the beginning of a real problem at the club. But instead of that, he punished Marcus Rashford in the way that in pre-season he punished Alejandro Garnacho. So it set the tone that everybody will be treated equally and football is a meritocracy. Regardless of your standing, regardless of who you are, regardless of what you have done for that club, Eric Ten Hag said it is the same rule for everyone. Clever. And Marcus Rashford was dropped from the starting lineup. Did he sulk? He certainly did not. He came on on about 60 minutes and he won the game for his club. In my opinion, that day, he scored two perfectly good goals. 
Only one stood, but it proved to be the winner. That is excellent management because he handled a potentially flammable and unpredictable situation. Dropping an informed Marcus Rashford could have had a detrimental impact on the result, not playing their star striker, and it could have had a detrimental impact on the mentality of Marcus Rashford, but neither came to fruition. Excellent from Rashford, excellent from Ten Hag. Rashford has certainly benefited from the new system, the new style of play under Ten Hag. And if you compare it to last season, I mean, it really is chalk and cheese. He struggled so much last season. And I think throughout 2021, 2022, Rashford only hit the back of the net five times in total. If you now compare that to the man that he is today, he is totally and utterly reborn. He is Manchester United's best and Manchester United's most important player. I believe that they are facts. I'm sure that the comments will be full of people telling me that the answer is actually Varane or Shaw or Casemiro or Fernandez or somebody else. But for me, the answer here is Marcus Rashford. The first name on the Manchester United team sheet is Marcus Rashford. And if you think what that means, think of the hallowed turf that Old Trafford is. Think of the players that have over the century been Manchester United's most important player. George Best, Charlton, Cantona, Ince, Hughes, Beckham, Keane, Scott. These are icons. And Marcus Rashford is now in that stellar company. Marcus Rashford can now say the sentence, I am Manchester United's most important player. I don't think he would ever say it. I think he's far too humble and far too self-deprecating to ever view it through that prism. But he is Manchester United's most important player player. What a turnaround. 18 goals already this season. It has to be Ten Hag to a degree, doesn't it? He couldn't find the back of the net at all when that imposter, Ralph Rangnick, was in charge. Suddenly he scored 18. It has to be Ten Hag. Even if Ten Hag is going to be very kind and very self-deprecating, it has to be Ten Hag, to a degree at least, right? Now this is what makes Marcus Rashford so good, so potent and such a threat. It's also what sets him apart. The variety of goals that he can score. He is lethal in virtually every single aspect of the game. There isn't a flaw to his game when it comes to being a striker. What do you want from a striker? You want a striker who can poach? Rashford can poach. You want a striker who can score from outside the box? He can do that. You want a striker who's fast, who can play on the last shoulder? He can do that. You want a striker who is capable of drifting wide to stretch defences? He can do that. He is one of the most all-round strikers that the Premier League has ever seen. It doesn't matter, does it? The man can do it all. It doesn't matter whether it's a toe pun in the box from, what, five yards out or picking the ball up on practically the halfway line at the Emirates, shimmying, flip-flopping past Thomas Partey, of all people, and then drilling it, pinging it low into the bottom corner past, in my opinion, the best keeper in the league at the moment, Aaron Ramsdale sensational. Oh, you want an example of a different kind of goal from a pinger or a poacher's goal? What about a mazy slalom run like he did against Forrest the other day? I'll tell you what's interesting, right? Since the turn of the year, the goal against Wolverhampton Wanderers, every single one of Marcus Rashford's goals has been followed up by the same celebration. It had never been seen before. Before this splurt of unstoppable form from Rashford, we'd never seen the celebration before, but we're basically seeing it twice a week now. You know how it goes. He sort of jogs over to the corner flag, takes a moment, stands still, perhaps even closes his eyes and then always points his index finger to his temple. Now, what we are led to believe is that it relates to Marcus Rashford shutting out the external noise that sometimes followed him around his career. But we don't know that for sure. Keeping it a little bit vague, but we think that's what it means. But he will not guarantee it. It's a little bit like the S in S Club 7. No one knows. But from what we understand, it's about Marcus Rashford finding a new focus. And it is a focus that is steering him in such a positive direction. When you see him in this form, and actually think back to the World Cup. He was England's top goal scorer during the World Cup and was constantly ignored when there as an option for Gareth Southgate. Gareth Southgate was choosing to play Raheem Sterling, an out of form Sterling instead of Rashford. When Marcus Rashford was finding that form and scoring goals for fun at a World Cup, I really think he should have been given more of a chance. But that's history. What is not history is 
Rashford's current form and going into the future, how many times will we see this celebration? A lot, because it seems to have caught on. It's a bit of a trend. We are seeing it all over the place. We've seen Tammy Abraham doing it. We've seen Joffre Archer. It's actually a celebration that now transcends sport. Joffre Archer, you know, he's had a tough time. He's been injured for a long time. We've seen him adopt this same celebration. Tammy Abraham seems to be a fan. And we saw something that I don't think we have ever seen in football before. Manchester United and Arsenal. Behemoth clubs. Rivals to the most venomous degree. In the same game, we saw a Manchester United player and an Arsenal player, Bukayo Saka, embrace the same celebration. We actually saw Joe Linton do it down at St. Mary's. Joe Linton was doing it and I couldn't, do you know, everybody was sort of aware that he was doing the Rashford celebration. I just couldn't believe the size of the geezer's biceps. Strongest man in the world. I'm telling you, his biceps bigger than my thigh, bigger than my head. The geezer would be handy in a straightener. But that's neither here nor there. What this video is about, it's about the brilliance of Marcus Rashford. How good is he? And where exactly does the ceiling lie for that man? I remember a long time ago, we were having a conversation, me, Boovy, and Adam McCullough. And Adam McCullough at the time said something that felt rather wild, rather out there. He said that Marcus Rashford could potentially become Manchester United's top ever goal scorer. That felt laughable at the time. And myself and Boovy both contested the point massively. We did not think that were even potentially on the horizon for Marcus Rashford. Now, nothing is impossible. I will be distancing thyself from those comments that I previously said. Marcus Rashford could become Manchester United's top ever goal scorer. He is currently carrying that club. He is the embodiment of that club. He is at the epicentre of that club. He is the public face, the living, breathing mechanism that represents Manchester United. What an achievement from such a young, impressive man. It really does blow my mind quite how wonderful a player he has become. And I tell you what, with international tournaments coming thick and fast, you know, we've got about less than 18 months till the next one. It will be wonderful if he can continue this form. Amazing. Thrilled for the man. Delighted for the man. Slightly annoyed that it's benefiting Manchester United quite so much. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a like. Please click subscribe. It would be my honour to welcome you into this community. As always, let me know what you think of the points raised in the comments below. I'll be in there the second that this video goes live. Hope you're all having a wonderful time. See you in a bit.